Toussaint Louverture made a grave mistake. He went to meet up with some of those French. They kidnapped him and took him over there overseas and then they starved him to death. He started trusting them too much because see, Toussaint Louverture, he grew up with a compassionate white slave master. His slave master was a little more compassionate than some of the more brutal ones and he kind of felt a way about the white people there. He, he had a little bit of that all white people ain't bad juice in his system and that was to his detriment. Whereas one of the other leaders, Henry Christoph of the Haitian Revolution, when one of the French generals, Leclerc, summons Henry Christoph for a meeting, Henry Christoph did not do what Toussaint did. Toussaint went there by himself thinking that there was going to be some type of military respect between the men and they played him and hemmed him up. Christoph didn't fall for that trick. When they said, Christoph, come through, we want to have a meeting with you, Christoph showed up with 3,000 soldiers who surrounded the building. He showed up to Leclerc's place, surrounded the building with 3,000 troops. Then Henry Christoph went in there and said, yeah, what, what you want to talk about? Because it damn sure ain't going to be no kidnapping today. We'll slaughter every one of you bitches up in here. We got to stop playing games with these folks. Christoph, one of the last of the powerful of the three generals, mentioned it in passing. One of the last of the mulatto governors, Peton, when they were arguing about democracy or dictatorship, Christophe had a dictatorship, but everybody was fed and going to school and doing well. And, and Peton had another part of the island that was, was called a democracy, modeled after Europe, but everybody was starving over that. <laughs> And when he faced Christophe, he, he said that if the French, since Christophe had been a stable boy and head waiter in the French inn, also fought in the American Revolution, but that's whole another story. But when he faced Christophe, he said, if the French had killed you, I wouldn't have you to contend with. And Christophe's answer was classic. If your mother had the common decency to keep Frenchmen out of her bed, I wouldn't have you to contend with. <laughs> A rich planter and an officer from the box were playing billiard one night. Christoph was marking their scores, a point forgotten more than a hundred years ago. Came up in their talk on which they deferred. Soon the two gentlemen, neither of whom was much the wiser for his wine, began to quarrel. Christophe interrupted to say the officer was right. Whereupon the planter spun around and slapped young Henri on the mouth. This was all there is to the story except that 25 years later, when King Henri ruled from his palace of Sans Souci, he learned that the planter was still living in the town. It was a strange twist of fate that this man, among all others, had survived the terrible years that intervened. But the king and fate were partners. One night when the palace was asleep, Christophe put on his sword and walked 20 miles alone down the royal road and to the silent city. He found a door and knocked. A head appeared at the window and he called the old man down. He reminded him of that quarrel long ago and of the slave he had struck across the mouth. Then they fought into the empty road and when the king had killed his enemy in fair fight, he went back through the quiet dawn to his palace.